Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. So in the previous episode, we finished up, or mostly finished up, the SC's new intake manifold. And today we are beginning on the new turbo header. So I already have my pieces cut and the first one of them placed into the bandsaw in my cutting fixture to cut the merge collector. So you can see here that I'm zeroed out on my little angle gauge here. And this is tightened down and I'm ready to make my first cut. But the big thing when you are cutting merge collectors is figuring out the angle of rotation in between cuts. Now this will be a circular six into one VBN collector, similar to what the old header has on it. So this will be difficult to see since it's actually part of the header, but there are six tubes going around in a circle and mating up to this V-band turbine inlet flange. So how do you figure that out, you may ask? And some of it is fairly intuitive, but other times these collectors can be a little bit difficult to figure out the math for. But never fear, I have a solution for it, and let's go over that right now. The way that I like to think about cutting collector pieces is in terms of regular geometric shapes, such as a three into one collector, you can base that off of a triangle or 180 degrees total that comprises a triangle. A four into one collector is 360 degrees. So four of those pieces that go into a circle can be easily divided. But if that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to you, then this formula right here will. So this is the collector rotation formula that a buddy of mine came up with a number of years ago, and it works out very well to figure out your base degree of rotation minus any little fine tuning that you need to do for your collector pieces. So for proof of concept, I have my calculator right here. And let's take that four into one collector that the normal degree of rotation or the base amount of rotation is 90 degrees in between cuts. And let's plug that into this formula and show exactly how it works. So like a normal math formula, you work top to bottom like this, and uh, let's go ahead and see what we need to do. So number of pipes minus two, which would be four minus two is obviously two times 180 gives you 360 divided by four gives you 90. So there's your 90 degree. Like I was talking about before, the three into one collector being based off of 180 degrees that would mean that you are 60 degrees per, per base rotation for each one of them. So let's do this. So three minus two equals one times 180 equals 180 divided by three gives you 60. And you can do this for all different types of collectors. So let's do a five into one, for example. So five minus two is three times 180 equals 540 divided by 5, 108. And for what we are going to do right now with this six into one circular collector, we do six minus two equals four times 180 equals 720 divided by six gives us a 120 degree base rotation for each one of these pieces. Now this isn't a perfect formula as something like a rectangular six into one collector for say a T4 open scroll collector or a T6 open scroll collector. If you cut the pieces at 120 degrees, it, you may be able to kind of fiddle it into place, but those are really based more off of that four into one collector geometry than it is the six into one collector geometry. What I mean by that is on both sides of the piece, say I have my two pieces that are cut with a 90 degree rotation here, two on a 90 degree rotation here, the center pieces in this area where my index fingers are, you apply that same 90 degree 
cutting angle or cutting rotation, but you make three cuts as opposed to two. So hopefully that makes sense. And I guess just for my own curiosity, let's do an eight into one real quick. So eight minus two is six times 180 is 1080 divided by eight, 135 degrees. So feel free to save this formula as if you are fairly green to cutting merge collectors or have a strange one that you need to figure out the geometry for, this is very, very handy and a good resource to make that a, as painless of a process as it can possibly be. Now collectors can come in all different shapes and sizes and splay angles and everything else. And those or those criteria or those portions of it you kind of figure out as you are building multiple manifolds what fits the best what works the best what gives you the most amount of space or an adequate amount of space to tie in wastegate provisioning so on and so forth there's a bunch more that goes into it than just the angle of rotation between cuts but the angle of rotation in between cuts at least for me, was the hardest thing for me to wrap my head around when I first started doing this. So right now I have my cutting fixture set up. At least it's indexed for me to make my first cut. And I used my normal length of feed out of the end of the collector cutting fixture. I used my normal collector cutting fixture angle as I have this fixture designed where it can cut a fair number of angles by loosening this bolt right here, loosening this one and pivoting the collector, or pivoting the collector cutting fixture. And as I pivot that, it will bring this section of straight tube either out or in. And that alters the angle of splay that the collector pieces actually have cut into them. And I've shown this before, but if we take my two fingers right here, and if I spread them farther apart, making a larger splay angle or bring them closer together making a narrower one you can really alter kind of the overall height of the collector but at the same time the farther apart that you make that splay angle the more collision of exhaust gas in the collector there will be as opposed to actually merging and transmitting the energy from that exhaust gas or i guess that fluid traveling through the header up to the turbine wheel and allowing your turbine wheel to spin and free to make boost and power. So generally I like to make these collectors with as narrow of a splay angle as opposed to as wide of one as I can. So I'm transmitting more of that energy into the turbine housing and allowing the turbo to do work more easily. Well my first cut has finished and here is the piece that dropped off of it. So this can be discarded and now it's time to do our second cut. So like we said before, I'm making the second cut at around 120 degrees. And with my setup here, that ends up being 125 degrees. There's a little bit of an angle discrepancy, whether that be my gauge, whether that be the bandsaw blade not being perfectly perpendicular to the actual bed of the saw. That could be my cutting fixture isn't perfect. Whatever it may be, I figured out that there is a plus five degree discrepancy and you may have something similar with your cutting apparatus, but you'll just have to figure that out yourself. So now I can go ahead and loosen the set bolt on my cutting fixture and do my rotation. So if we go ahead and rotate over get me down roughly to 125 degrees then i'll check my length of feed and maintaining the same length of feed or as close as you possibly can to it is very important if you have lengths of feed that are drastically different between cuts then kind of the internal crotch for lack of a better explanation that won't line up appropriately and that isn't the end of the world, provided that you're going to be welding the inside of the collector, but it makes that job much easier if your lengths of feed are at least, with my setup, probably plus or minus a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch. So now that I have my angle of rotation achieved, I can go ahead and tighten my set bolt and double check everything. So 
I'm about at 125 degrees, so I'm good to go there. And if I check my length of feed, I'm right where I want to be for that. And looking through here, it looks like my cut will go perfectly well. So at this point, I'm good to go to fire the saw up, drop this, uh, drop the band through it, make my second cut, and then there'll be one collected piece that's ready to be parted, and I can do it five more times. So now that I have all of my collector pieces cut, I need to figure out how long they are going to be. Figure out the parting length, I guess. The way that I'll normally do this is I'll take two of the pieces and hold them roughly together like so, and then kind of eyeball what I think the appropriate distance is going to be. And you have to figure that I'll be running a weld through this area where I'm covering the marker over right now. And I don't want the end, or I guess the inlet of the collector, to terminate right where that weld's going to be. It makes it pretty difficult. So I'll eyeball, and I don't know, something like that right there seems reasonable. And from there, I can measure out and figure out what the nearest hole number or easily referenceable uh, number is, which in this case, it appears to be around four and three quarters to five inches. So I'm going to step it down to four and three quarters, as I think that will be more than sufficient, or more than a more than sufficient enough distance to have this collector come together in a nice usable manner. So now that all of the collector pieces are parted and ready to be sanded, it's time to start and knock out the deburring process. So when these come off of the saw, I try to run the saw in such a manner where there's as minimal cleanup as possible, but there is still quite a bit that needs to be done. You can see all the burrs on the inside and areas like this above my thumb as well as over here, there's a little bit of overhang from where the saw didn't take those pieces off. So all of these will get the same treatment and you can kind of deburr as much or as little as you would like. The areas that you need to pay the most attention to are on the collector inlets above my pinky here and taking these burrs off of these areas through here. I'll do that and I'll sand these edges down but beyond that, I don't do a whole lot of cleanup as I'm typically welding the inside of the collectors as well. So if there's a little bit of residual burrs and everything else hanging in these areas, that isn't the end of the world as they'll just get melted into that puddle. So this video, I don't wanna show the whole debarring process. It isn't that interesting. It's just holding things up on the sanders. So let's go ahead and do some YouTube magic and see these things now. And then, and there we go. I got all of the major deburring that I wanted to do done on these. And like I said, you can still see some bit of burrs hanging on the inside of most of them. But again, that won't be a huge deal. It actually won't be a deal at all by the time that these seams are welded on the inside as well. So at this point, since Stainless Bros has such nice surface finishes on all of their materials, I don't need to do any alterations to the surface finish on these. So no polishing, no sanding, no anything like that. They're a nice brushed finish, which would be what I'd be going for anyways if I had bought a different type of tubing. But the fact that these are pre-prepped and everything else makes it so right now we can go over and get to tacking this collector together.
Just about ready to put the 6 and a one collector onto the elbow that goes up to the turbine flange. But before I do that, I wanted to show the end result of the inside of this collector now that it's all welded. You can see no more burrs or anything like that. Just nice clean seams. Another thing that I did is I put a little bit of a grind on this tube here. And it may be difficult to see on camera. But kind of the purpose of doing that grind was to be able to rotate this elbow in a little bit while still keeping the collector straight uh, along the run of the head flange. So you can see my three little index marks there, the three corresponding ones on the collector. And once I get this tacked, I'll be ready to go ahead, weld this all together, and then this portion will be done and it'll be time to begin building. Well, I tried to film this outro segment yesterday and my brain was absolutely fried after being in the hot shop and sweating and everything all day. So let's give this another shot and uh, get this video wrapped up. So this is the end result of the SC's new collector. And I'm very happy with the way that it has came out with the end product. All of the welds on the collector are nice. This weld right here I paid special attention to as that is going to be kind of a main leverage point once the turbo was on there trying to break this elbow off of the collector. So I really went in there and made sure that I got good penetration on it. And you can see on the turbine flange to the elbow I welded the inside of it. The whole collector is welded on the inside as well. And this piece is now ready to be the heart and the foundation of the SC's new turbo header. So I'm still waiting on the head flange that should hopefully be here in the not too distant future. And at that point, it will be full speed ahead building this new header and getting this wrapped up as I really, really want to hear what this car sounds like with what I have in mind for the header. One other little piece that I wanted to talk about here is if you notice on the inlets of the collector, these aren't beveled the whole way. They're just cleaned up. And we'll get to why that is in a little bit. But for right now, let's just take this for what it is and let's go ahead and wrap this episode up. So thank you guys as always for coming along on all these different adventures and journeys with me. And I'm really having a lot of fun with the SC project 
getting this thing back together, bringing it back to life. You can see that I have a nice new radium fuel rail on here and my time search should be here later today to get the intake manifold wrapped up as well. So like I said, next order of business once the head flange arrives will be to get the header knocked out. And then from there, the car can be running again, but there's still quite a bit of things to do, quite a bit of work and parts to acquire and everything else. And this will be another really fun project. It'll be a lot of work, but all of it will be worth it in the end when I finally get to drive this thing down the road again. But until then, and without me running my mouth anymore, that'll be about the end of this one. So as always, be sure to subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, check out the website for manifolds, for merch, for all things good that way, including my 15th anniversary t-shirts and hoodies. Those are linked in the description below. Check them out, and if they speak to you, please pick one up. If not, then hopefully I come up with something that better tickles your fancy in the future. But with all that being said, that will be the end of this one. And I will see you guys in the next episode.